Connor. Uh, I know the Bruins are three preseason games into this, but we kind of got our first real look at an actual Bruins lineup on Thursday night at TD Garden. And getting to see, of course, you know what the first line is. We've talked a lot about the second line. Uh, one thing interesting is seeing how the third line is forming in this game. And again, they played a Flyers team that didn't really bring all of their A players. So take everything with a grain of salt. But so far, this line has looked really good. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, you were accurate in terms of you have to put expectations in check a little bit in terms of preseason play, as you said, against the Flyers. But I think if you're the Bruins, you have to be very encouraged by what you saw from that third line, which has a lot of different moving pieces, right? You've got a, a new guy down the middle in Eric Howla who has dealt with injuries in the past. Nick Felino, there's, you know, conversations about how much he really has left in the tank. And you've got Jake DeBrusque, who has been here for a while, but what kind of DeBrusque are you going to get? Kind of remains to be seen, but so far, you know, how they've all played off each other, I think is probably one of the more encouraging things you've seen from this preseason. I mean, uh, DeBrus has been in two games, Howell have been in two games, pretty much played uh, with each other during those those matchups, and they look pretty good. I, I think the one thing Cassidy noted that uh, I think anyone who's watching these games has spotted is that the pace is a little bit different with that line. That's it. And I think the most important thing for DeBrusque, who had just such a bad year uh, last year. I mean, the worst of his career and uh, just playing with a lot of uh, more jump, more purpose. You know, it just looks different. Just the eye test early on looks like a different guy. Yeah, absolutely. I think for, for DeBrusque, as much as he's a, a noted goal scorer, he almost hit 30 a few years ago. His style is pretty much, you know, north-south. It's nothing flashy. It's getting to the front of the net and, you know, driving plays, getting grade-A looks. And a guy like Howla more or less keeps it simple. It plays the same way, straight north-south. And even though maybe a guy like Felino pace isn't the first word that comes to mind when you look at his game, I think he does little things that can impact that line, whether it's being one of the first guys in on the four check, whether it's, you know, creating space, the net front, you know, causing havoc down low, those little plays mixed with a guy like DeBrusque, who, when he's on his game, you know, has a nose for the net. Those I think are the, are the small plays that lead to quality chances. And it seems like right now they have the good, a good mix in place to kind of all play off each other, which when it was DeBrusque with Krejci, who's a little bit more of a cerebral guy uh, with coil, where it's a lot more holding onto the puck. Sometimes it just seemed like those like spots were a little bit out of whack. This way, the way this group's set up right now, you hope they're able to play off each other a little bit more and it leads to goals on the board. Yeah. Another thing that's really easy to notice is Taylor Hall, uh, who looks like Taylor Hall. Um, and again, this is uh, obviously something, again, we've talked about how much the Bruins needed someone like him. Again, seeing him kind of driving the offense on that second line, but also seeing him on PP1 uh, and what he can do there. Uh, again, I, I think... Whatever they got from Taylor Hall last year, I think it's reasonable to expect an, a, another level this year in terms of the type of player you can get, which we've talked about on this pod, could be maybe closer to New Jersey MVP level Taylor Hall type type of play, which is really what you're, I mean, that's the pie in the sky, but it's not unreasonable to expect that you could get a version that closely resembles that. Yeah, I think especially where he's on that top power play unit, he can kind of just sit around and collect, you know, rebound goals. Mr. And Net front presence, right? Yeah, exactly. You know? And even though, you know, Taylor Hall doesn't fit the profile of a typical net front guy, you see the way the Bruins kind of utilize him. And for Bruce Cassidy, a net front isn't just, you know, a Nick Ritchie, a guy who plants himself down low and gets tips and rebounds. It's a lot of puck retrieval, you know, forcing the puck back out to the blue line or to Marsh in at the half wall. And a guy like Taylor Hall who's got, Wheels is great at that, at retrieving pucks, fishing it back out, generating chances when they're there. So you look at him on that power play, how he complements the guys already there. And on that second line, again, uh, you know, we've talked about it before where he's almost like the new Krejci where right. you have to see how the pieces fall into place. But even just him in his own game, whether it's in transition, uh, you know, zone entries, all those things, he's kind of making something out of nothing every time yes. he touches the puck, which is very good for the Bruins. Yeah, he's going to generate a lot of the offense on that second line as opposed to Krejci again, who it was his style, as you said, as cerebral, always good with the puck, finding the right guys at all times, just never had anybody who could bury the biscuit. But Hall, as you said, all of the stuff that he does is huge. Now, the, the question, we wouldn't be, you know, we, we can't get through one of these without talking about Jackson Nika, but uh, it's hard not to because, you know, and again, a couple games ago, he really flashed um, and he's in that 2C role as Coyle kind of works his way back and it's a full blown audition. So again, from what you've seen in the practices and the games so far, uh, 
what's the likelihood this sticks? And if it doesn't, where does he go? Where does he go from here? Where do you put him? Especially you like that third line now. So what do you do with this guy? Yeah, it's it's a tough situation, especially when you look at that third line, as you said. Is he going to grab the 2C job? Uh, I think it's pretty unlikely at this point. I think it was already uh, a long shot going into this because I think uh, with Coyle getting back, I think Cassidy really wants to see how they how he fares in that role. Um, but for Stadnika, it, it's one of those spots where, again, the offense didn't pop in that win over the Flyers. But post-game, Bruce Cassidy, you know, his kind of comments on Stadnika weren't like, you know, he wasn't producing. It was a lot of praise for kind of the 200 foot aspect of his game of the details, which I think for Cassidy means a lot for these younger players in terms of what they need to do to get in the lineup and stay there. Problem is where does Tanika fit, right? Is he, you know, a, a fourth line guy. You See, that doesn't make like sense that, to me. Yeah. Right. That's, a, that's the problem, right? Yeah. And, and that, that's what I think is, I don't know if he fits, but I do think a bump down works where you could see maybe a Felino going down to the fourth line and whether Studnika centers that third line or Coyle plays there or on the wing, if you decided that you wanted to do that. I think that is what would make most sense here, but I am curious what they want to do because if that third line is clicking, you don't want to break up the flow uh, just because you've got to move pieces around and they don't fit other places. So it's interesting to see what happens to them uh, if he does it, I think what's so interesting and the reason we keep talking about him is you're looking for a higher ceiling out of that position. And I think Studnika might have it. Maybe. We don't know. And 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 that's what I think people are searching for. But I agree. I think Coyle is is the likely is the likely guy there.